Yeah, All right. right, actually start this time now, Fred. All right, and welcome to the third try of the recording of the second episode of the Marvel Phase, phase Two. Uh, Look, it's a different epi- mic. We epi- had to run some tests. Episode of the Comics Brew and Chew podcast. We are talking about Marvel Two movie, uh, Phase Two movies today, including Iron Man Three, Thor: The Dark World, uh, Captain America: The Winter Soldier, which is now farther in the list than Tom has let me get before. Guardians of the Galaxy, Avengers: Age of Ultron, and Ant Man. Uh, the small guy. The small guy. Yeah, yeah I didn't. I, the, size, man. Well, there was a uh, there was a small bit of text under the actual name of the movie. I didn't know if it had a special subtext yep. or not. So it is just Ant Man. Starting off with one of my personal favorites is Iron Man three, the best of the Iron Man trilogy. Controversial uh, opinion, maybe. That is a hot take that I will gladly throw in the freezer. I think it's my favorite. Iron just Man one is like, my favorite. It does so much for me. I like. I love. It's my favorite suit design. I love the Iron Legion. I feel like. You know, you kind of have to break a hero down sometimes. And yeah, Tony's been broken down in almost every movie at this point. But like this one, he his like, whole body's this broken. This was the star of his real downward trajectory post Avengers. Mm. But like, you know, he has this whole thing where like he needs the suit, he needs the suit, and then a good portion of this movie he has to work without one, and that's when he realizes that like, even without the suit, he is Iron Man. Yeah, but like this is also the movie that I was like, hey, you want to see how cool the Mandarin is? That doesn't exist. Mandarin, you want to see the you want to see the possibility of Fing Fang Foom? That doesn't exist. Mandarin, you want to see how cool Killian like is? That twist. doesn't happen. You want to uh, see how hey, annoying Alter Killian was fun. You want to see I how Brody's cool a twelve year old is? Breathing that fire. doesn't happen. Well, here's the thing: the Mandarin's a very difficult character to do in modern day. Uh, I feel no like no matter I'm, which way you do him, you do him as the crazy old Asian guy with rings. <laughs> very stereotypically insane. Right, but it would be the one Asian character Marvel could actually do that they wouldn't get shit on for, seeing as how they f- everybody was pissed about Iron Fist and like several <laughs> other Asian characters. <laughs> oh, the ancient one? Like That's maybe a, The ancient one getting moving into Phase 3, the ancient one from Doctor Strange is another character that if they were true to the comics, exactly. it'd it be would be incredibly right. racially That's insensitive. But, but there was yeah. still an onslaught of people that was like, they whitewash the character. To which I see both sides of the argument, but like the Mandarin is a classic villain for Iron Man. Yeah. And I feel like they with all the modern interpretations for all these characters they're doing, like someone in the room had to have had a better pitch than we're gonna get Ben Kingsley to put on ten rings that we referenced in the first Iron Man movie, and then he's just gonna go, I'm not actually not even like a plot device. I'm just here. Bye. See, I like the t- I don't know, I just Oh, yeah. I think the twist feeds a lot into the way that Tony approaches this situation and a lot of situations moving forward. Um, just having something that on the surface is one thing and very much something else. It has a very interesting look at the way the media spins things, the way that yeah. stories like that are approached. Yeah. It definitely craps all over the comic book counterpart, but it does it in a way that I find interesting so I can get behind it. Well, I just came off watching the entire Iron Man animated series from the 90s where the Mandarin is the lead villain. Yeah. So, like, they do him decently in that because it's just essentially taking the car- uh, the comic and making a cartoon out of it. So they still do play him in that, like, weird, like, Asian stereotype. Yeah. But, like, I mean, there, there are plenty of movies that still do stereotypes and stuff. Like... I you felt, can't get away from it. I'm I not saying like they should do it, but it it's just... It kind of falls... It does kind of what Captain Marvel does, to, again, to skip ahead, where, like, you know, the whole time, like, the Skrull are the bad guys. Yeah. Like, you th- you know what's going to happen. Like, yeah, the Skrull's but, the bad guys. And then in this kidding. movie, it's like, oh, the Manor's going to be the bad guy, and you find, oh, no, it's just a, an actor. Yeah, but, like, the, the Skrull plotline was more compelling <laughs> than the... Because literally all it was was Ben Kingsley turning around and going, I'm an actor, now I'm out of this movie. Yeah. It's worth pointing out, too, that this one, unlike the first two Iron Man films, was not directed by Jon Favreau, although he did return as an actor in this film Mm. and as a producer. Um, Shane Black took this and very much made a Shane Black movie. Like, Mm. I'm glad that his style was able to bleed through into the MCU, whereas when he did The Predator last year, that really snuffed out all of the Shane Blackness of it, and that was just bad. Mm. Um, but it has that kind of Shane Black wit in the way the dialogue is. It's a sort of, it's a very different kind of snappy dialogue than the stuff that someone like Joss Whedon does that I think has a lot more weight Mm. to it. Plus, like, unlike Iron Man 1, and especially 2, you actually are interested when Tony's not in the suit. Yeah. Like, in this movie, when he's not in the suit, he's actually doing stuff, and it's interesting. Like, the whole going to the hardware store and building a bunch of 
impromptu weapons and then raiding the Mandarin compound with hardware supplies. Like that that's cool to me cuz Tony Best is Tony Stark is at his best when he's building because right. that's who he is. He's the mechanic. Yeah. He fixes stuff. And, Unlike uh, the movie The Mechanic who doesn't fix yeah. things. And then uh I feel like something that might have some kind of future like foreshadow is the first time we see Pepper Potts wear an Iron Man suit. Yes. Yeah. We're probably getting rescued. We have that scene on right now where uh the Malibu Mansion attack where Tony like points the suit at Pepper and it goes on her. Yeah. I love this scene. Mm. The scene think, where we almost lost Dummy. I think this is my favorite Iron Man suit. I think. And this is basically the same suit he uses in Ultron. It's just in Ultron. It's back to the regular color And there's scheme. less gold. I yeah. really... I didn't like the, the more gold on this suit at first, but it, it grew on me so much. Yeah. It's such a good-looking suit. <laughs> we see Rhodey instead of War Machine as Iron Patriot, Iron Patriot this time yeah. around, which is goofy, and I like that the film pokes fun at that. Yeah. And it can also be brought back. Like. Yep. Especially now that they're using Spider-Man, they could go full Norman Osborn, Iron yeah. Patriot at some point. Yeah, but that would be, like, way down the line. Yeah. Like, they could do it, and that would be a cool callback, but, like, that'll take some doing. Because you have to go through his whole, like, Green Goblin thing first. Yeah. I mean, they could just start him off as Iron Patriot. They could. Do a little reversal, you know? They, they, they don't have to re follow the comics. No, no, no they don't, they but it's just, like, the, the pathos in the actual comics for why he is the Iron Patriot coming off of being the Green Goblin for so long and then needing to hide the fact he is the Green Goblin mm. while also being the hero of the Secret Invasion like is a cool twist because then when he gets the armor taken off of him during Siege he has the Goblin paint under his face, under his mask like he's wearing the Iron Patriot armor but, but he's, he's dressed, paint, as, he's Green dressed as Green Goblin and like he's acting like the Goblin does. That could be interesting but uh, so yeah, Iron Man 3 I, like I said personal favorite. I got over the Mandarin twist real fast. It took some debating for me. Like, depending on when you talk to me, I really bounce back and forth between Iron Man and Iron Man 3 as far as which I prefer. Most days, I think it is Iron Man 3. And just to touch back on Tony really quick, I love the way that they portrayed his panic attacks. Yes, his panic attacks are just, like, really good. It, it makes so much sense yeah. with that coming off of Avengers, and it really sets the stage for his mentality moving forward, especially into, like, I mean, moving into Phase 3 for a second, but the way he is in Civil War. Yeah. So much of that spirals from Avengers Iron Man 3, that kind of one-two punch. Yeah. I mean, that is, like, something you can't deny about this movie. Like, they use the events of Avengers to really tie into this, mm -hmm. because I think, yeah, Iron Man's the only, excuse me, character to have his third movie. He has three movies before anyone else even has a second. Yeah. Mm. So, like, which is understandable seeing how he started this, but, like, him having the most character development at this point and the most character changes is something that, like, ties in well with how they formatted this whole universe. Yeah. And to make him the first character to really start developing this way. Because yeah. he is your flagship is cool. Mm. And it's... You gotta wonder, like... If this is what he's like post Avengers yeah. one, where he lives, yeah, and everyone else like you know the team it's, makes yeah. well he he dies and everybody else lives. Yeah, could you imagine what it's going to be like in, in Endgame, post Infinity End Game. War, after he's stranded like, on Titan with Nebula just? And now the now the kid who was in this is Harley. In, he's in Endgame, or at least he was like cast he was. And, yeah, he's one of those guys that's like crossbones and the ancient one. That there's been a lot of like random like the they no were spotted, how. but nobody knows how. It. And you know when this this is getting uploaded today, Endgame we'll be seeing Endgame tomorrow. Mm. Well, yeah, so you know. I'll let you guys know like, how it is when I leave. I feel like Iron Man has a lot of good. I'm gonna be hiding in a corner. I think. Iron Man 3 has a lot of good set pieces. Yeah. A lot oh, yeah. of good set pieces. There's the, the really great, the plane bit, which I love the gag at the end where it reveals that he's not in the suit. Mm. Like, that was a really creative way to do that. Yeah. Because they'd never, like, they kind of let it on that he can manually operate yeah. the suit, but you kind of forget about it. And then when he gets hit at the truck at the end, you're like, and then he's yeah. like, oh, okay. You forget about it because up until then he spent so long without it. Hmm. And then um, there's the whole, the Iron Legion, which might be one of my favorite scenes in the entire MCU. They designed, what, like 50-something suits? And then and the coolest one doesn't even get shown. Orbital. Yeah. They uh, they wasted a lot of the Iron Legion. And I think the company Hot Toys has made, like, every single one of the... Almost They've every one of the of suits them, yeah. has been made into a collectible figure. 
but we barely see them in the movie. And there's some cool ones. I do like a lot of them, but like I said, you have to like look into the art book to see a yeah. lot of the cooler ones. Orbital. Which, mm-hmm. I speaking of art books, I forgot my art book for the next movie on the list. <laughs> Are we transitioning? I th- do you guys want to transition? transition? Transition. Transition. Uh, Thor: The Dark World. I'm I'm here to now have my this favorite <laughs> favorite character in the roster get shat on for his second movie. <laughs> I'm not going to defend Dark World. I enjoy parts of it, <coughs> but I understand it is a bad movie. The thing with Dark World. I enjoy Dark World. I like it. I enjoy but. it, like uh, as very face value. It really, really feels even more so than Iron Man Two did. It feels like they had a release date that they had to hit, and they yeah. scrambled to put something out for that there's, release date. There's a lot of fluff. Like, yeah, there's, it's, it's interesting, <coughs> but like the plot is just yeah. so. Like, it's also the, uh, st- the like, MacGuffin. Like we talked about last time, it's still them trying to toe that line between like, oh, it's fantasy, but oh, it's sci-fi. Like not wanting oh. to commit to either because like now they're kind of leaning more towards magic exists, but they still want to play it as like, oh, the different realms are kind of like different planets almost, and like. It's and it's magic, but it's not. Get a lot of that in the opening scene where they're fighting a lot of yeah. that rebellion, and you yeah. see some weird like science fictiony guns yeah. and stuff mixed in with the fantasy weapons. And I think like, that's kind of a cool mix what is to do with a character. Um, he fights Korg, like another version of Korg, another for, Cronin, yeah, another Cronin. Our first Cronin that we yeah. see in the MCU. Well, first is in couple this Cronin. Film. And I think for a while people actually called it Korg. Korg. Well, and no, then... I think they confirmed that was that was a Korg because they didn't know they were going to do Korg for uh, yeah. Ragnarok. Like, everybody's like, oh, that was Korg, because one of um, Thor's first villains in the comics was Korg and the Cronins, or the Stone Men from Saturn, as they were called. Yeah. But, like, yeah, like, we're watching the part from the beginning now, like, parts of it, where you see them looking all Lord of the Rings and shit, and all of a sudden, like, Star Trek laser blasts are flying by. I will say this about the movie, looking at the trailer again. It is shockingly really well shot. Oh, yeah. Um, Alan Taylor, who directed this one, did a couple episodes of Game of Thrones. I believe he actually did both... um, Oh, wait, no, he didn't do... No, I was going to say Blackwater and the Battle of the Wall, but those are Neil Marshall, the guy that did the terrible-looking new Hellboy movie. Yeah. Um, But Alan Taylor did some big episodes of Thrones. In fact... Alan Taylor most recently did the Beyond the Wall episode in season seven with the yeah. group going, you know, Beyond the Wall to so capture he, a white. He, 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 just for reference, he d- directed season one, episode nine, Baylor. So season one, episode ten, the uh, Fire and Blood, The North Remembers, which is season two. Yeah, Beyond he the last he one did he Beyond did the before, Wall. Yeah, he did he's Beyond not doing any this is, season. And then before that was season two, episode ten, Valor Magulis. Gotcha. Seth. I know. Um, yeah, uh, Sif was another character they just dropped. Yeah. yeah. They also had Natalie Portman here, wasted as Jane Foster, but she was pretty much the MacGuffin for the movie. Yeah. Speaking of MacGuffins, that's an interesting segue, because this is the first film that reveals Infinity Stones. And the name Infinity Stones. Um, it, go, it goes and she tells us that the either is the reality stone, and then it uses its credit scene oh, to go back and say the Tesseract was the space stone. Yeah. And it doesn't, the movie doesn't get into this, but it kind of implies with the Bifrost being destroyed at the end of the first Thor and Odin needing to use dark magic to get Thor to Earth and Avengers. I think it implies that the space stone was used to reconstruct the Bifrost. Yeah. I don't know anybody from Bristol. <laughs> but, um, you know, it's like, it men- yeah, it mentions the either being an infinity stone. Yep. And, and then, the scene with the collector that James Gunn directed I, for the credits. I think Thor even tells Odin, he's like, it's an infinity stone, you can't destroy it. And then Thor's plan in this movie is, I'm gonna destroy it, I'm gonna zap it with lightning, and he zaps it with lightning, he's like, we did it, and then it's like, nah, it's, it's not, you didn't. There's right. a bit from the um, opening here, the opening prologue, the opening prologue was actually directed by Tim Miller with his animation studio, the guy that went on to do the first Deadpool film. Alright, mm. but just so we're clear... This is one of the reasons I love these fucking movies. They went back to Boar. Yeah, they yeah. brought him in. Boar was great. I love that. He was originally supposed to be in uh, Infinity War. Yeah, the oh. Russos had talked about doing a Boar, something with Boar as a flashback or something, yeah, and it like, didn't wind up happening. Just as a Thor fan, though, having Boar show up, have the curse show up uh, in the movie. The Dark Elves are weird. And the thing at the time was it was influencing the comics a lot. Like, yeah. it went from Jason Aaron's God Bomb, God Butcher story right to a Dark Elf story in Malekith just to have this movie tie into it. And then it went back to, like, some heavy, like, Jason Aaron regular shit. Yeah. But, like, 
just as like a uh, Thor fan, like he's my favorite Marvel character. Like, I have a soft spot for all of these. I noticed the trend when watching this with Thor movies. Yeah. All the main villains in Thor movies use short swords or daggers. Loki uses a, yeah. a yeah. dagger. Malekith just gets charged at by three yep. Asgardian soldiers, and he pulls out a butter knife. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think that's the whole like fantasy thing. Like, oh, they're evil because they're like the rogue thief mm. class, they and they're using daggers. short swords. I really like the curse design. Mm. The I think he looks too. cool. Like one. Yeah. Creepy porcelain doll. And the eyes. fact that they all look like Malekith's face, mm. face is just that. But I, then you got like the weird ships. Like, yeah, what the fuck? Cool, like, also, think yeah. that. Frigga's death and that funeral is really That's well a really done. Good shot, yeah. Um, I mean, it's not like Frigga was like this crazy great character that yeah. everyone was obsessing over, but it did enough for yeah. Thor and Loki's arc. And Thor and Loki, I think, is the real heart of the movie. Oh yeah, Loki oh, coming wow. off of being the main villain in this kind of start of a redemption arc, yeah. but not really given the cliffhanger it ends on. It it they're the real heart of this movie, and those actors work so well off so of you, each other. So you want to tell me? That Thor is the heart of a Thor movie. Mm. And then it also yeah, crazy stuff. Breaking, continue, Marvel continuing to break down the main three. Yeah. yeah. Like, you know, we have Iron Man breaking down in Iron Man 3, and then we have Thor in this one losing his mother, and yeah. really but starting I, to... And this is a real I, start to Thor losing yeah. everybody yeah, in I, his I, life. I feel like Thor 3, though, is like his real breakdown. Like, where Iron Man was dealing with the PTSD in um, Iron Man 3... Ragnarok is where Thor really breaks down entirely yeah. and then builds himself back up. Mm. Real cool. I mean, to, to move it along, not yeah. to the next movie, but the final battle in this movie is awful. Oh, it is. It it's doesn't so bad. make any sense. I think the no. bits with the hammer going through the portals are actually a lot of yeah, fun. Like, it, that's actually kind of creative, but the most of it... stuff, but the stuff when, like, Jane Foster needs something yeah. to do, and they're like, we made these spikes that can control yeah. portals, and it's just like, how? Yeah. It's... no. It, How did Eric, I mean, I guess Eric might have had, used some of but, his crazy god. It, I think that's what it implies, but, but it's like, just needing to bring back the main cast from the first movie wasn't something like that wasn't a necessity. Having Jane Foster still be the love interest was cool, and then making her like the MacGuffin plot point, I can see why they did it. But like, yeah, I especially can after see. now having read through the entire Goddess of Thunder run and then going back to this movie, I'm like, I have seen Jane Foster being handled. Way better than they have ever tried in this movie. And at this point, Thor is, has held two Infinity Stones. Yeah. yeah. He held uh, Tesseract at the end of Avengers, and then in this one, he's holding... Uh, well, he holds, what's her name? Jane, who... While well, she has the, the either running through her. her. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Suck it, Peter. Well, yeah, these are... Uh, this final battle with the dumb spear things. Yeah, yeah, no. Like, Thor literally kills Malekith with science equipment. Yeah. <laughs> And it's like such Again, a... the the disparity between, oh, hey, Thor's magic, but it's all science. That, and they're like, oh, what do you call it? He's got the stone inside of him, and he can't, the stone can't be destroyed. And, like, he's taking, like, yeah. he's regrowing body parts after having the, yep. like, the things teleport them, and Thor's using like, the reality the stone. And then they just it's kill him by dropping a spaceship actually, on him. He hmm. uses the reality stone to, like, do some, like, permanent stuff. Thanos uses it more for, like, basically making illusions and yeah. nothing mm -hmm. that he does with it he really holds bubbles lots mm -hmm. of bubbles uh turning <clears throat> drax into tinfoil um yeah, no no watching it again it's dumb but yeah like i mean like the stuff the fight between them like, is real already, I like the... already having the like king of the dark elves versus the god of thunder should be badass enough you don't need like the all this other showdown shit. in spartelheim was better i think yeah I mean, the cool thing is, is like, there's one point in this fight where thro Thor throws his hammer, yeah. and they teleport. Yeah. And because they went somewhere else in space, the hammer's like, oh, gotta go, and it goes, like, through Earth's atmosphere. Yeah. And then they leave that planet and go to another one, and yep. they show they keep Mjolnir change of direction. Yeah. And then he doesn't get it back till he gives Malekith the last, like, hit yep. with it. Yeah. And at that point, it's just, like, been gaining oh. speed and momentum. Yep. It just came back into the like, atmosphere. Like, that's the fun stuff with the play, is the way... The, the stuff with Mjolnir just zipping around through realities that, is fun. That's always my favorite thing to see in the comics. I think it happens in Aaron's, like, the volume four of Aaron's run. But I know it happens later on. Um, Thor's fighting Galactus, and he throws Mjolnir, like, through the Earth, and it gains enough momentum. To like nail him, but it yeah, it's bullshit like this that I love, like with just how the yeah. hammer works. At least it stopped. They didn't take the comic thing where after like sixty seconds, if he's not holding the hammer, he turns into Donald Blake. Because <laughs> that would they did have that fun Donald Blake reference in the first. They one. did, and we didn't talk about it. But, <laughs> but um, 
moving on. Speaking of fun things that were slightly mentioned in the first movie, Captain America the Winter Soldier. Oh. Yes, my first movie in the theaters. Ever? Wow. You Very oppressed fun. child. <laughs> Your first Marvel movie. My first Marvel movie. Were you reading comics at the time or no? Nope. Oh wow! That's what started it. So you really got into it. Like I, I like. She's she's the I, person that Marvel's looking I did, for. I did my toe in. And I'm like, ooh, ooh, I like this. But Amanda just pl- pinched her nose and jumped him right. And, and then one day at work, he started talking to this random kid that they transferred. Oh, and yeah, now this kid's just like this kid hears me talking about Marvel, and he just starts like going off. He's like, well, yeah, actually, Jason Aaron's on a Thor. Thor is uh, four thousand years old, and I'm just like, ooh, buddy, who the fuck are you? <laughs> Back it up a bit. Um, go back to cleaning up. So. Those Winter Soldier is real good. I jumped into this one and never came back from it. I, there was a girl I went to high school with that did the same thing because Sebastian Stan. And she yes! was, no, but she was acting like she was this huge comic book fan, but only because Sebastian Stan was a person. I mean, granted, I loved Sebastian Stan back during Gossip Girl. Like, if you want to use this movie to like get into comic books, yeah. that's fine, but don't try to be like, oh, I'm funny. It is, it does, it nails everything it tries to be right on the nose. No, it does. It's a great political thriller. It's yeah. a great superhero movie. It's a great action movie. It's an incredible action and movie. And even, like, we're watching the beginning part right now, which a couple weeks ago we got together with a group of our friends and watched it, yeah. and we all lost our shit watching the opening crawl. Uh, no, honestly, the this whole opening, like, this mission with him, yeah. I... I didn't really, like, I saw Captain America 1, yeah. and I was like, eh. Saw Captain, saw Avengers, eh. And at the point, Iron Man was my favorite. Yeah. You weren't going to change mm-hmm. my mind. This movie changed my mind. I love Captain America now. <laughs> yeah. yeah, this and, like, movie. But, like, like, just the, like, just the way he uses the shield, like, this everything. is the first movie where he doesn't use a gun. Yeah. And he's In just, the slightest, like, yeah. it's brutal. He's, like, the yeah. shield fighting is, it, they made him cool. Not the to Russo mention. brothers made him cool. Mm-hmm. Not to mention the fact that they're fighting shield the whole time. Yeah. And also, though, you saying about First Avenger and the Avengers Captain America, I also think this wouldn't have worked as well without coming off of very, like, Boy Scout Cap. Mm. Because you you kind of need to see him in his element before you rip him out like this. And this is, you rip him out of his element, like you said, Phase 2, really deconstructing its heroes, or in this case, really deconstructing the world around our hero. It, it's what like Cap moving forward from this movie is something we really have special. Cap starting to show that he's not a Boy Scout. He's willing to go rogue to get it, stuff done. It lays the groundwork for Civil War real well. Yeah. Granted, he wasn't going rogue at this. point. No, but like it, you can see him being able to, like, shirk the restraints of. Mm. He, it's not about anonymous orders yeah. coming over his head anymore. It's about what he yeah. morally feels is the right thing to do. Also, the fact that we got that badass Sam Jackson car chase in the middle of the city. That is one of the best action set pieces this whole, like, in the This MCU. movie, pretty much hands down, has like the best action sequences in it, which yeah, is amazing for how much plot they fill in this movie. Mm-hmm. Who would have thought that a couple of guys who directed some episodes of Community were going to direct the best action in the mm-hmm. MCU? And like you also, Ooh. there's so much intro. There's so much in this movie yeah. that like moves into like the later plot. Hydra being within Shield. And you also get Sam in the Winter Soldier, who yeah. later proves to be pivotal yeah. Yeah. in a lot of the MCU stuff being added. And you have his relationship working with Nick Fury and yeah. uh, Black Widow. <sighs> and that whole thing of him not on... trusting Black right. Widow at first. You hone in on Fury and Hill, go, kind of working outside of S.H.I.E.L.D. Mm-hmm. anonymously mm-hmm. behind the scenes moving forward. You get some really fun references to things like Doctor Strange, who's just a really great surgeon at this point. Mm. Um... Yeah, the highway fight scene is mm. another. Well, there's the high, there's the Nick Fury like car chase, yep. which is a great scene. Then there's the highway, the Winter Soldier scene with Sitwell again, yep. another returning character, and another returning character. Remember is um, oh, Senator Stern, Senator Stern, Gary Gary Shandling, who passed away a few years ago, turns out to be a Hydra agent, and, and then, and then it makes to... sense back in Iron Man Two when he's trying to get Iron Man suits. You know he's trying to get the suits now. It's like. Just the little stuff that yeah, eventually yeah. weaves Except now in. I'm, now I'm picturing those Iron Man suits in that dumbass Hydra yellow and green costume. <laughs> <laughs> that would be great. That would be a really cool thing to make. Yeah. I might try and make that. You're welcome. Um, um, this movie also, just a silly little thing, has one of my favorite cheeky little like joke references back to an earlier film. And it's when um, they're looking at the new Project Insight Helicarriers 
and they mention that the new helicarriers have the repulsor, repulsor technology deck, yeah. because of Start Tony getting up, up close with the previous. The turbines, yeah. That's just one of my favorite little, like, really quick joke references in the whole yeah. franchise. And out of all the movies that she's in, I think this movie gives Black Widow, like, the most respect. Yep. This she's and Civil War, I'd say. Like... Yeah, I, this over Civil War, probably, because Civil War has so many more moving parts. Yep. Yeah. Like, there's a lot of moving parts in this one. She but shines like, in this one. Oh, yeah. She gets lost in the background in the other one. It's about time that she's not just a yeah. pretty girl. But Joss Whedon tried so hard to make her like a powerful <laughs> woman. But yet every Joss Whedon movie, she wears some kind of skimpy, revealing, or very feminine outfit. Not that there's anything wrong with that, no, but like, not. it's like he he's trying too hard right. to be like, look at me, I'm progressive, stand up progressive guy. And it's like you're not really. The yeah. first scene you have a Black Widow, she's tied to a chair in a I mean, skimpy black it, dress, and she is by the same point in time pinching her cheeks. It's also like, kind of funny. Like I see the humor in it. I also see the like why it's disgusting. Yeah, but. With that, like, I'll at least give credit to that one where it, it is on the surface that, but really she's the one extracting all the information yeah, from yeah, them. So I like that them. it's playing with surface level versus what's really going on. Mm. Like, I don't like to give Whedon credit a lot. I will on that bit. Remember, he doesn't like anything Whedon made except for the fact that he was obsessed with Firefly. And I won't watch it again. You know, I will not watch I, it again. The only, thing, the only thing that bothers me is I would have liked them to stick to the comics a little bit more when it came to the whole Winter Soldier Black Widow relationship. Oh yeah, how they, they, live, they get married, right? Or they date or something? He's in love with her. Oh, okay. Could happen moving forward. Well, we all know he's gay for Steve, so... <laughs> oh, no. Tumblr would have you believe so. Oh, God, not Tumblr. Even though, I mean... Yeah. <laughs> can we not, thanks. Well, okay, so you can boil Civil War oh. down to a bromance, like... So the, the, we're, we're watching a scene, and the scene when, like, the mask comes off yeah. Bucky, and, like, Steve realizes it's him. Being in the theater, I saw this movie with two people who didn't know it was coming, Yeah. and their reactions being like, <gasps> and then them, like, we're leaning over and being like, wait, is that Bucky? Is that that guy from the first one? I'm like, yeah, and they're like... And just, like, all of a sudden, like, you see these people go from, like, kind of invested to, like, whoa, my God, his best friend's the bad guy. So, at the time, I was into comic books, but I was kind of reading more DC. Like, I was hooked on the Snyder Capullo Batman series and, like, stuff like that and really reading a lot into Image. I wasn't doing too much with Marvel, especially Captain America. But, like, I knew Bucky was the Winter Soldier because I, like, that just became common knowledge for me. Mm. Didn't realize who Bucky was in the first movie because that was before I was really deep into comics. Yeah. But, like, knowing who he was in the second one and then going, oh, shit, he was actually in the first movie. <laughs> there you go, Fred. Yeah. Like, the bigger surprise for me was going back, watching the first movie, and going, oh, they oh, were setting this up already. He was there. <laughs> but, um, and then just as a, before we shift, because we probably got to get moving yeah. to another movie, and it, it fits, because the next one's the space one, but the start of Captain America, where he dives into the water and then climbs up on the ship to fight people, juxtaposed with Captain Marvel where they jump into the water, come out on shore, and mm-hmm. fight people. I'm catching a trend, which means Namor jumps <laughs> into the water, comes up on a ship, and fights people. <laughs> Calling it for the start of the Namor. Doesn't movie. Universal has uh, a Namor, right? It's a weird no. Hulk situation is with, with Namor as well, where Marvel can do whatever they want with the character, they just have to but if it. they do a standalone film, it has to be a co-production with Universal. You know, you know what's a cool, uh, a cool synonym for Universal? Or Universe? Galaxy. Ah. And Ooh, here Guardians we are moving into my jam. So, Guardians of the Galaxy. Which, I'll, I'll, before we start this, I will say, when uh, when the first trailer for Guardians came out, Ooh, I was shot. like, oh, this is the first Marvel flop. Yeah. Oh, I was like, <laughs> a lot you, of people I were. was like, Thor 2 was like... And the fucking internet. Yeah. So, I am one of, I think, the few people in the world that approach Guardians of the Galaxy having heard of them and read them before. Um, there were because there were rumors about Guardians of the Galaxy back in 2011 or so, and I was like, "This seems weird. I want to read this." I read the comics and I the Abnett and Lannan comics, and I fell in love with those characters with the comics. Um, read the core four volumes of that. Went on to read the Thanos Imperative, which is like a oh, cap on that. It's such amazing. a great yeah. And if you read the actual Guardians run, it's just I, as good I as tried. Thanos I can't Imperative. get into it, but. Um, it's all great stuff. But then some rumored names came out as for directors, and on that list was James Gunn. And I'm like, oh shit, it's the guy that made that weird little sci-fi horror film Slither. He'd be fantastic. And that's what happened. Um, 
First Marvel soundtrack I ever bought. This I, movie. Uh, <laughs> the the music is in it, the soundtrack like the act the not the film score but the soundtrack is integrated in such a fantastic like emotional way that anchors the story narratively as well where it is this device that he got from his dying mom which hell of a way to open the movie and leave everyone which, crying so we see we get Ronan introduced which is a nice thing that comes back to us later in Captain Marvel um, personal note this is like the only Marvel movie my dad will go but I can watch whenever it's on like he'll watch Marvel movies with me yep. just cause like I'll watch them but he's like Guardians is on I'll watch it yeah. Guardians 2 comes on, both of us are knocked out on the couch. The only thing I was excited, like, before it came out, the only thing I was excited was the possibility of uh, Nova coming in, yeah. which I don't think we're going to get. Oh, no. At least not for a while, we, if ever. Probably ever. I mean, we got the Nova Core, so the option yeah. is always on the table. No, but, like, they keep... they keep. Didn't Thanos destroy the Nova Core? He yeah. did, but who, who knows if, what Endgame is going to do with that. Well, they said he went to Xandar and wiped it out. Yeah. I'm imagining he, you know, half the oh. population... At least. Yeah. But, um... Oh. I mean, I don't know. I mean... Oh, Nebula. I don't get how... Unless Thanos went with a bigger army... How he would have managed that. Because he couldn't, like... The Chitauri couldn't take Earth from a guy in a suit, a 90-year-old man... Oh, uh, the Chitauri... A green like, monster. Yeah, the Chitauri are like this, A guy uh, with a bow and arrow. A guy with a bow and arrow and a super spy. Yeah, but, but the, yet... The Chitauri are like these mindless monsters. Like, Thanos is like a cosmic god. Yeah, but like... So and plus he had stones at the time. No, he didn't have any. He stones. had. He went there to get the power he went there stone. To get uh -oh. The power stone. Yeah, but yeah, sure. Maybe he brought the Black Order with him. Yeah, but Thanos is already before he gets the stones like a cosmically powerful monster. Yeah, but which like, makes you wonder why he was sending a bunch of lackeys to get the stones for him in the first but place. The, the guard, the at the in this movie, the Guardians beat someone with a stone. Yeah, but like plot contrivances. Yeah. <laughs> Well, um, um, they also gave him books. Star Lord they, kind of is a, a half god yeah. at this oh, point, yeah. a half celestial. We talked about that on the old channel in our podcast for the movie coverage of Guardians too. But uh, mm -hmm. so, but um, Guardians is a, I remember seeing in the theater and being like, wow, it was like a one-two punch of uh, I Winter think, Soldier being incredible, and then I think Guardians 2014 is the best year for Marvel. Oh, it's oh, with Winter right Soldier here. and Guardians. By the way. First dropping of multiple Celestials is in Guardians. Yeah, we find with out Esan. Peter is quote unquote a celest half Celestial. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which fuck that. Um, you actually see one of the like you the core Celestials in the flashback with Esan the Searcher. Yeah. Yep, and you get nowhere the head of a Celestial just mm -hmm. floating in space, which in the comics becomes the Guardians' base, yeah. and I could kind of see them eventually yeah, making that, that there in well, the films. No one lives there anymore. Yeah, like Thanos went there and like. Yeah. Took the yeah. reality stone set up in Dark World, yeah. But, like, um, I can see why a lot of the Guardians are, like, people's favorite characters. It's kind of a shame what happens to them later on, like, how they act in Infinity War. Just, like... Eh, just, no, they're fine in Infinity like, No, for, I like, like a him plot, in... for a plot reasoning. Oh. Like, with Peter being a dick and shit. I mean... I mean, not a dick, as just overly yeah. emotional. We'll yeah. get to that with Infinity yeah. War, but I stand by that. No, completely. no, I get the choice. No, after watching, going through again, I stand, mm -hmm. like, his whole... No, I Thanos, like, yeah. in that no, scene, I understand. It's just like the fact yeah. that he messes up the plan. Like, from a perspective inside of the movie, mm. messes up the plan. From a totally human perspective, yeah, yeah. that's what anybody would do. Yeah. Mm. But, um... um the, there's some really cool setup with Nebula hair. I think she really shines in Volume 2, but you get some cool stuff with her hair, and she becomes one of my favorite characters. Mm -hmm. Rocket and Groot are Rocket and Groot, and they always steal the show yeah. when they're on screen. I am Rocket. Um, also, the fact that this is the movie that introduces Dancing Baby Groot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, and full-size adult Groot. I think I was singing Ooh Child for like three months straight oh, yeah. after this movie came out. Which, by Guardians 1 soundtrack, way better than Guardians 2 soundtrack. Uh, I, like I don't know. Two. I yeah. like Guardians 2 I, I think Guardians 2 as well. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like the, the songs fit better in Guardians 1. I feel like Guardians 2, they were trying to go for the same thing. It, yeah. It's and different. I think they're much more emotionally anchored in Peter in Volume 1, and I think they have much more narrative resonance in Volume 2. Yeah, and do you know what anchors do? They hold stuff down. Anchors sink. Much like Avengers Age of Ultron. <laughs> are we on Ultron? Here we go. <laughs> we are on Ultron. All right. <laughs> you guys can just call me the king of uh, fucking segways from now on. Okay, so Age I hate Ultron. of Ultron. 
man, that first opening scene with them all working together to take down Hydra, I was like, this is kick-ass. This, yeah. this, is, this is what I, like, as, as awful as it says, I would love to see an Avengers movie where they just beat up bad guys the whole movie. Like That's how they um, should happen. If all, if all of Ultron was just them trying to take down Strucker, like, it's yeah. just them, like, fighting nameless, like, one-shot <laughs> bad guys. And then, so like, I didn't notice, and then, like, the Hydra like, mechs come out. And I did the not realize until, like, however many viewings later, all of those Hydra Friendly. foot soldiers... Their armor is Chitauri. reverse engineered Chitari yeah. stuff. I didn't pick up on that at first. I picked it up like right away when they're gold and purple. Um, and I also Zemo. The first Avengers is a very very ugly movie. It looks like it belongs on like ABC. I think they stepped up their game, and Ultron is a much nicer looking film. Yeah. I mean, with uh, with you know ugly movies, you know that was the first one they. They had this ensemble superhero yeah. movie. I'm sure they had to like cut some yeah. corners here and there. And then, it wasn't the the money making powerhouse. Yeah. It becomes yeah. right after Avengers like fucking breaks box office yeah. records. So the teaser for Ultron leaked. If you guys remember, yeah. Yeah. and they, they <laughs> tweeted. I remember Marvel Studios tweeting uh, Damn, Damn Hydra. Hydra, and they put it out like yeah. a week before they were I supposed remember to. At the time, well, that was at the same time that the Deadpool <coughs> uh, uh, footage CGI yeah. footage dropped. At the when this trailer dropped, I remember being at work and most of the guys on our crew being into Marvel. And I remember the trailer dropped and we all went on break immediately and we all huddled around a smartphone watching it on a picnic table out front. I think I remember walking into you guys doing that. No, we were in the way and we we're all just like sitting there watching it, like huddled over it, just like, Oh my god, like being like so hyped because like this is the teaser that leaked, like seeing like you see the I don't know. You just see so much stuff and I was like, so excited for this movie and then it yeah. comes out and it's just like, ugh. It's good, it's good for a little bit and then they're like, well, I, you know where you should go? Hawkeye's farm. Thor should go take a bath. There's whoa, whoa, hey, whoa, scenes. Whoa. <laughs> Thor can take a bath whenever oh, he stop. wants. It's such a dumb scene. He goes to Eric Selvig and he's like, Eric, I want to take a bath. <laughs> Bathe me, Eric. You have to Hawkeye's farm, me. though. Seriously? <laughs> I like family yeah, man, but then, Hawkeye. But then trying oh. to watch like, a Hulk and Black Widow bad without like, like, like Hulk Hulk ridiculous. Dick ripping her in half. Like, um, like there's scenes in Ultron that really work. I don't think Ultron as a whole works. I think no. pieces, I like Ultron. I thought it was cool. Pieces of Ultron. Movie. No, I mean the film. Oh, oh, oh. Ultron the film. Pieces of Ultron work like his left leg. Pieces of the film <laughs> really work. The Hulk versus Hulk Buster is great. Oh, my favorite um, scene. I think they really got Scarlet Witch right and Vision fantastic right on their first go. Oh yeah, introduction of Vision was great. The cat really has a lot to say about this one. <laughs> She's like, no, I don't like it. Um, like robot scares me. I know Amanda disagrees with me on this. I like Family Man Hawkeye. I do not. That's um, not. That's not Hawkeye. I know. That's Clint Barton. That's Hawkeye. <laughs> Um, hey, what else? Just oh, also Ultron's first she appearance at the party know. scene oh, that is, is really yeah. well done. Don't it, that's when he plays uh, "Got No Strings," right? Yes. Well, well, he sings it. He sings voiced it by David Spader. <laughs> um, also, oh, in, the, in the trailer, we, I think they play the song. We get <laughs> AKA Robert California from The Office. <laughs> we also get um, oh god, what was I going to say? Quicksilver. Uh, the, yeah, Quicksilver. For five whatever. seconds, he, he dies. Um. Oh, Claw. Oh, we get our introduction claw. to Claw, and mm. Claw's oh, a lot of fun. And uh, Baron Strucker for six minutes. And uh, <laughs> we get our introduction to Wakanda. Uh, well, oh, the, yeah. not really Wakanda. I mean, we get the first confirmation that it exists outside of the Iron Man 2 map. Mm. Yeah. But the Iron um, Man 2 map, you have to like look at and study. This is the first Wakanada. <laughs> He's got the brand that says Thief. Yeah. Yep. The fact that, um, like, I think we've talked about it before. Uh, the fight scene where they're all fighting the Ultrons in the middle of the city. Great scene. Yeah. Very comic book, very everything. I didn't like it as much as the Chitari fight. Yeah, I, got, I gotta say, the Hulkbuster suit, how they call it, Veronica. <laughs> and it like when it comes down, it assembles. And then the whole time he's fighting, as the suit gets damaged, <laughs> yeah. he's replacing parts. Yeah. And, like, from the satellite such a that cool are just... idea. And especially for me and you coming from like a... Not from a background, but like from a love of Gundam. I feel like, I just fucking love robot suits. Yeah, in I know. General. But like this feels very like double O. Yeah, to me. And like, oh god, it's such a. I've always loved the Hulkbuster. Like, I was so excited when we were getting yeah. it, and then and like, it's such a cool design. And too. then when they're like, oh, it's gonna be an in uh, Infinity War two. I was like, oh my fucking god, what did I do to deserve this? <laughs> I'm so happy. And then they actually put the Hulk in it because he can't Hulk. Mm. 
But it's a cool fight. It's shot yeah. with a very red tint, I think, to, like, solidify the fact that Hulk's crazy right now, guys. I'm just waiting. Look, red filter, because he's mad. Because, yeah, well, Scarlet Witch also has him slightly mind-controlled right now. Yeah. Um... So this film reveals, it obviously wasn't intended from the start, but it reveals that the Mind Stone is the Scepter, yeah. and Guardians, the previous film, revealed the Orb to be the Power Stone. We didn't even touch on that. We went um, so fast. Oops. Yeah, so we the now MacGuffin have... The Guardians is the purple, gu- the Power Stone. Yeah. And in this one, we have the Mind Stone. It goes, it winds up in Vision's head. So now we know of four, four. of the six Infinity Stones And it'll be, point. what, another two years before we get any reference to another one? Uh, one year. This uh, is 2015, Strange is the last film in 16. You sure? I yes. thought Strange was 17. Nope, 16 is Civil War and Strange. When did you guys go on the cruise? 17. That was Guardians. We did the Strange one as well. We did the Strange one. It was That was, a, that was November 2016, because Amanda and I were working on a film and we missed premiere night. That's right. Was that the... You guys filmed at the restaurant? Uh, that that no. Right? No, this was a bigger thing that we were employed oh, okay. on. Whoa. But, uh... Ultron itself, it, it kind of like, if you ask me, it stumbles in the beginning. Yeah. They have this whole regroup thing where they go and they steal Vision, which is in, integral. Yeah. But the Hawkeye farm, Not Thor it. stepping on his daughter's toys and breaking them. <laughs> like, Captain America and Iron Man chopping wood, kind of setting the ground for well, Civil War. Where I, I There's even sh- one mention where... Uh, Tony goes, I don't trust a guy with a dark, without a dark side. And Steve goes, well, maybe you haven't seen it yet. And you're like, oh, wow! You're gonna regret saying What's that. Coming you're now? gonna regret saying that. Uh, Tony, he's, he's coming. To be fair, Tony was chopping wood. Steve was ripping it. Yeah, Steve was just ripping it. It had this massive pile. I remember someone did a really great reaction thing to that. They just showed Steve ripping the wood and then it cuts to Groot looking shocked in the first Guardians. <laughs> But like yeah, and then when like to- uh, they're like, oh, the to- um, Hawkeye's wife is all like Laura. Mm. I almost Velma. called her Velma. Yeah, the same actress. <laughs> she's like, can you go look at our tractor? It's not working. And, and then like, Fury is just chilling. Mm. And he's just like, oh god. And then you get that speech of Tony tells Fury what he saw, mm-hmm. and he said, and then to- uh, you know about how all the Avengers were dead and it was his fault. And then Fury has a great line of the problem was that you didn't die; it's that everyone, everyone else, else did. did. And you're like, oh boy! When and then when you see the end of and Infinity, uh, War. Infinity War, you're like, huh. So speaking of Fury, there's a really great little connection to Winter Soldier. I love. Um, in Winter Soldier, there's this random Shield agent that almost gets killed when um, uh, Crossbow yeah. is there is trying to make him activate the, the helicarrier. Yes, yeah. he's piloting and he's the... with the in the helicarrier, the old school helicarrier with Fury at the end of this film when they arrive in mm-hmm. um, Sokovia. Which great reveal. Yeah. Um, the whole Sokovia, Ultron turning it into a meteor, I thought was really cool. At first yeah. I was like, this is cheesy, but looking back, I'm like... It's also funny because you got it's that cool. plot with the two characters that are supposed to be Magneto's kids, because that's a very Magneto-like... Yeah. Type of, of bad uh, guy yeah. plan, yeah. Um, but, uh, I mean, it's, uh, what's his name? Runny Fast Boy, who's not Quick the Flash. Silver. Silver. He's, uh... <laughs> not Flash. He's like... Fine. He's so he's kind of lame in this one. They got they did such a good job with both Vision and Scarlet Witch right the, from the opening. Well, you could tell who they were gonna kill very yeah. early on. Well, but the coolest part of I think the best part for Pietro is when he sees me on there flying and he's oh he moves that's fast, fun yeah and it's like slow motion he's like. I'm going to grab this fucking hammer. And then he reaches out and grabs it and it just pulls him. I also during that scene I like the gag where um. Scarlet Witch is able to mind control oh, or right mess with scene. every single Avenger except no. Hawkeye because he's already dealt with all of that shit last time. I also love Thor's line. He's like, he like she goes to like and she does the weird like hand wave in yep. front of him and he just looks at her and she like run, <laughs> runs away and he's like, she tried to mess with my mind. And she's like, luckily for us, I am mighty. And, and then, then he literally just, walks into a hallucination. He walks into Ragnarok. <laughs> yeah. Um, th- there was actually a bit with Loki that was filmed for he that was hallucination to, he's the that guy got cut. Coke, you see, yeah. Because um, that went on way too long. The flashback, those whole flashbacks too. That also like that yeah. went on for too long. I liked the Cap and Peggy one a lot. Yeah. I, um, the Thor one was Oof. it was better Ragnarok setup than the bath scene. See, yeah. right. 
So we're watching the fight scene where they're all like teaming up fighting everybody, and Quicksilver literally just like threw an like an Ultron on the ground, and I'm trying to figure out how he beat any of these guys. Yeah, no, watching it, it's like he runs by them and they're all just in pieces. And, like, did he like have like a Phillips head and he's sitting there like taking them apart one screw at a time? <laughs> to be fair though, like Hawkeye, uh, not Hawkeye, um. Quicksilver got some of the best memes after the movie came out because mm-hmm. everybody was like, "Cap Shield is made out of vibranium. Hawkeye's is made out of Quicksilver." <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> but um, we do have more setup to the Infinity Stones and Thanos in Thor's bath. Yeah, yeah. Which, which is that's the only reason that scene was in that movie. <laughs> which is a little jarring once you get to Ragnarok and it doesn't do really... any of that. That that whole scene, yeah. That whole bath scene was supposed to be longer. Yeah, because Thor's like, yeah. There's a whole extended version on the Blu-ray. He goes to Selvig and he's like, I need to find this pool, Eric. You must come with me for some reason. I'm going to take a bath, and you're going to watch. (laughs) (laughs) And like the whole scene, Thor's like thrashing around in water, shirtless, and Eric Selvig sitting there like, Yep. Wow. (laughs) Again, that's that's like my thing with the Dark World. They started like they're grabbing ancillary like Thor characters because his matter the least. And yeah. like every other, everybody's side characters, Thor's don't need to come back. But, uh... Outside yeah. of, like, Loki. And Ultron's, I don't know, it's not great. I feel like all the character, a lot of the, like, the action is great. Uh, At the end of Vision, it, when Vision kills Ultron. Vision being able to phase through stuff, just like in the comics, I can't tell is you a how lot of fun. I was, like, waiting for that to happen. Yeah. For him to, to phase yeah. through. Because, like, I was waiting. I was like, I know he can do it. Not phase two. He's going to do it. Phase I really through. like Vision. He's going to do it. And then finally he does he it. He does like, it. Yes, yes, he phases through. He grabs the heart. It's cool. Um, Natasha just bothers me so much in this movie. Did she? Okay, so, like, it's been a while since I watched this. Did Hawkeye literally run out of arrows so he threw his bow at somebody? Probably. Yeah. <laughs> now he's punching Ultrons. Like, what the fuck? I mean, Thor, uh, Hulk's eating him. <laughs> yeah, but it's the Hulk. <laughs> uh, Nat has a gun. <laughs> I, it's like in the Endgame trailer where she's just shooting in sync with the music. Yeah. It's cool though. Uh, you see Vision lift the hammer the first time yeah. someone besides Thor lifts it. Oh, yeah. hands it to well, him. we do see, see at the party. Yeah. Cap wiggles it. Yeah, yeah. which but, was uh, which was the big thing for everybody. But the cool thing is, is like, and well, later on, um, Vision uses it yeah. too. Like he backhands yeah. an Ultron. Yeah, we, yeah. Well, Thor, Ultron Prime has Thor. Yeah. And Ultra and Thor's like, I am Thor as long as I have life in my. He does this like dumb like speech about him being Thor, yep. and he's like, I'm running out of things to say. <laughs> and then like Ultron turns and Vision just whacks him with the hammer, and he's like, it's terribly well balanced. And Thor's like, Ooh, what's he All right, so speaking of getting Vision, th- that also means this is our last time with um, Jarvis. That's true. Yeah. We lose Jarvis and we get Friday here. We also see um, the first time. Uh, War Machine gets to work with the Avengers. Yes. He oh, comes in he with comes the in. helicarrier. Yeah, that's I'm right. I'm honestly shocked Sam didn't come in at yeah. that point. Really Especially because he, he was in the do. film. I'm yeah. shocked they didn't... The other thing is, uh, this is the movie that Hulk disappears in. Yes, yes. For, and he uh, goes off to to Sakaar. Yeah. Mm. And then, uh, you know... Be- because of, like, copyright reasons. And they kind uh, of set up... Reasons. They, it's almost weird. They kind of set up this thing where, like, he could have been on Earth. Yeah, yeah they left because... it very vague. I have a feeling that if Guardians wasn't a success, they would have rolled Planet Hulk into Guardians 2. My thing was, I I had heard initially that it was going to be that buddy cop, like, style movie. Yep. Like, for Thor 3. But it was going to include all nine realms. Like, they've done that in the comics before. Yep. They're going to have them going through the Nine Realms, not them going through, like, Planet Hulk. By but. this point in the MCU, like, current day, we've seen all but one realm, right? I think. I'd have to make a list. We see Vanaheim and Thor 2. Yep. We see Jotunheim early on. Obviously, Asgard and Midgard. Yep. Well, it um, depends. Do uh, we want to go with the current canon or the actual Asgardian mythology? The current, well, yeah. the MCU canon. Cool. We go. We see Spartelheim. Yeah, because right? Spartelheim. We can't use the modern canon for the books because there's a tenth realm. Hmm. Yeah, I don't Heaven. think we see them. All. I think Nivellidair has been considered one of the. We s- no. Realms. Have we have we seen uh, Hell yet? I think Hell might be the only one we haven't. Yeah, we've seen Hella. We haven't seen Hell though. Most Volheim we see in um, the beginning of oh, Ragnarok. Dark, of, yeah, 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 Ragnarok. Ragnarok. We don't see Alfheim. Fumble, that scene. We see Vanaheim. Al- is Alfheim the light elves? Yeah. yeah I don't know Alfheim is the light elves. Okay. We see Vanaheim in Dark uh, Dark World. Midgard, Asgard, Jotunheim. Uh, yep. We see Needle of Alir in... In uh, uh, Infinity War. And apparently we do see Niflheim. I don't know what movie. That they have like a picture here. I can't tell. It I might just be one of the discs we see in the sky in Dark World. Oh, is it one of the worlds they teleport to? Yeah. When they're fighting? Yeah, maybe. But yeah, I mean, we've seen everything but Alpha. Speaking of teleporting to other dimensions, uh, Ant Man. Ant Man. The microverse. 
the quantum realm in the MCU because they can't say microverse. That's dumb. Um, Ant Man as a fun so Ultron is like the big ending to the phase, but Ant Man yeah. is like a little. This, is, book this is where they change my most anticipated MCU movie. Believe it or not, you mean your Ant-Man. most. I was, anticipated. I was really, really looking forward to Ant-Man when Edgar Wright was directing, and then that whole stuff happened. The trailer came out, I thought, wow, this looks real lame. And then the movie came out, and I had so much fun with it's, it. It's a, I, I love it. I Both love of the fun. Ant-Man movies are just like I haven't cute. seen the second one. You want to borrow it? No, I'm good. Okay. Um, Wait, is I it essential? It. Huh? Is it essential? Yes. It I'll does kind of segue it. into... Yeah. yeah. I'll let you borrow it. I got it. Um, um, but, uh, it's, uh, I, like I said, most anticipated. I was kind of happy they went with Scott Lang instead of Hank Pym. I like the way they used Hank Pym. Hank Pym, you get into, like, beating up his girlfriend. Oh, yeah. And, uh, yeah, yeah, I like... You know what happened once, right? And they have never let it go. <laughs> yeah. Peter, Peter Parker has backhanded Mary Jane across the room. And no one let, no one brings that up ever. Yeah. Ant Man does it once. Um, I like and it's I like getting thing. Scott though. I right. really enjoy the relationship with his daughter and the yeah. weird family dynamic you get with you know his ex wife there, especially carrying over into the second film. Yeah. And the family that grows with Hope yeah. and with the Hank. growing family, like Giant Man. Gro- not yet. Not in that stature. We're on the wrong end. I hope that the third one is Ant Man and the Wasp and Statue too. Or Stinger, That's... right? No, no, who's Stinger? Yeah, you're she right. becomes Stinger, become Stinger yeah. right? But she starts off as Stature. Stature's dumb. That's a dumb name. Well, it's because who's she Stature? only it's because she only grew to start with because she was stealing pin particles and then she like she got the giant power she couldn't shrink. <laughs> she was stealing. Yeah. A <laughs> lang. A <laughs> lang stealing. My my favorite thing in that movie though is the fact that he gets his degree and he ends up working at a Baskin Robbins. Mm. Yep. And then he gets fired because yeah. they found out. Yeah. And the guy's like, I'll let you steal a smoothie on your way out if you want. <laughs> That's a great scene where the dude goes to Baskin Robbins and orders a hot pretzel and he's like, Can we do <laughs> yes. ice cream? Like, uh, like um, it's it's weird that Ant Man might be the most relatable movie in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Louis giving his nice spiels about Dude, everything. I can't believe Marvel hasn't given into the fanfare and had him like narrate anything yet outside they of the They had him do one for Comic Con recapping like the first two phases of the MCU a few years ago, but it never leaked online. So like I was talking to my cousin. <laughs> But also, in his story at the end of the film, we get our first Spider-Man reference when he that mentions the guy that can crawl up walls. Yeah. yeah. Um, Which, a lot of people are like, it's a Spider-Man reference, and it's like, is it? I think so. he also said the guy who can jump, and that could have been Baltrock. <laughs> Baltrock the Leaper. Yo, um, the greatest villain. So we also, it very firmly establishes a post-Age of Ultron world when... Um, Hank sends Scott to go to an old Howard Stark facility to steal some tech. Mm. And that old Howard Stark facility is now the, the current Avengers, Avengers facility. Yeah. And you have and, Hawkeye. And uh, Hawkeye. The other Falcon. bird Avenger. Duh. Falcon is the only Avenger currently there guarding the facility. <laughs> and that's a really fun man. fight. Yeah. Because like, he's like, he can't see me. I can see you. <laughs> and then he does the whole, hi, I'm Scott. Like... It's a, we, I, I really like it. We also get one of the coolest villain suits. I absolutely love mm. Yellow Jacket's look. Yeah. And one of the most disgusting kills from a villain when, oh, when he shrinks when he shrinks the guy in the bathroom and he just yeah. cl- collapses into the puddle of goop and, and just flushes him down the, him down the like, toilet. Steven. That's like, so just despicably evil. Yeah. And, and it's like, funny because like they the also ad- show him doing the same thing to baby. She, she, which is like, that's the bad guy. Look, he's killing animals. <laughs> it's that's just, him. <laughs> the Ant-Man movies are so, like, compared to everything else, they're, like, cute, almost. Yeah. Also, and then you have something like that. I would I would like to see more of Hank Pym in yeah. some regards, because I do like his character. I like the fact that they have the Pym-Stark relationship, like, that they were, like, business yeah. rivals. Yeah. They work together at um, S.H.I.E.L.D. But, like, on from a company level, they were business rivals. Mm. And that he was a former, like, S.H.I.E.L.D. agent, and he was, like, their top spy because of his ant abilities. Is this the last time we see Peggy before she dies? Probably. Yes, we see Peggy Because Civil the... War's the next movie. Yeah, Civil right, War's yeah. the next film, yeah. Is it the next? Yes. Okay. Civil cause... War starts three. Yeah. Oh, okay. And, uh, you know, you see her and uh, what's his name? Something. The guy plays. Uh, Howard. Howard. Uh, you see him. And... Yeah, the older, the guy from Iron Man Slattery? two. Some John Slattery. John Slattery. And it's cool to see them because like then you establish that Hank Pym worked for Shield. Yeah. 
doesn't trust them. Doesn't like Howard, which stems yeah. into Scott not liking Tony in Civil War. Mm. Um, it it's really yeah. Like it's a small film. It's very much. Uh, There's no huge stakes. It's yeah, it's not personal. huge stakes. It's. I um, like. I also like the fact that it feels kind of like another. No, I'm not saying it is exactly, but it feels like another Iron Man like redemption story in a similar fashion. Bare Bones plot is basically the first Iron Man. It's what, a good. Hi- it's a heist. Movie. Yeah, that's what makes it cool. No, it is, but like, it just, like from certain plot points, you can see it as like a repeat of Iron Man in a way. Which I'm not going to knock because, like I've said, I enjoy but the, the first fights Iron are Man a movie. lot more fun. Than oh, the Iron fights Man. are fucking amazing. You have like the whole the yeah. toy room fight. Yeah. Like what? A oh, god. when they knock over the train right here, mm. <laughs> oh. and it's just, like this big and like from their scale, and then <laughs> it's just the it's little... Thomas the Tank Engine. Yeah. Like uh, it's such a simple gag with the shrinking and growing things, but, but it's it always so, so well, well used. Yeah. It, like it, it's the kind of thing that you'd think would be lame, and they just they do it. it they do it so much, but it, you, I laugh every time. Yeah. Uh, Ant Man, I was very happy with when I saw it. Yeah, it was perfect. I never I saw it in theaters. It. I saw it when it was out on DVD. Um, Slash Blu Ray. So as we're winding Slash down on, on Phase two. two, there were a couple more short films on the first couple um, discs. Iron Man three came with the Agent Carter short film, which is set post World War Two. Has Peggy um, just going on a rogue SSR mission and ends with her getting the gig with Howard co-running S.H.I.E.L.D., which actually does a fair amount of setup for Winter Soldier in a cool way. And then the second short... Oh, is that that's the Ants that, preview, isn't it? It's my my favorite... The I think my favorite ants. promo for any movie comes out of Ant-Man, yes. and it's, it's Paul Rudd and Michael Douglas slapping their thighs and going, Ants! Ants! ants. Not gonna lie. Ant-Man, I, I um. giggle every time I One see it. One of the it. things that got me hyped for this movie was a stupid sketch on Jimmy Fallon. He had, um... The lip sync battles, right? Yeah, and Paul Rudd comes on and fucking kills it, yeah. like better than some people I've ever seen do before on that show. I mean, show. there was that one with Hawkeye where he sings um that oh, Ed Sheeran yeah. song, yeah. thinking out loud. Yeah, but it's just about him I'm being fucking awful. Hawkeye. Yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah, and no, like, that one's good because Jeremy Renner can sing, but having Paul Rudd lip sync to um. Yeah. Oh, I think he sing- lip syncs to like Tina Turner at one point. Yeah. It's fucking. And, it um, is. He does uh, Don't Stop Me Now by Queen. Yeah. It is amazing. <laughs> and we did get a second short film on the Thor The Dark World Blu-ray. This one dealing with, we had some talk about the Mandarin stuff before. Um, the second short film, All Hail the King, shows Trevor Slattery in prison and reveals that there is actually a real Mandarin out there linked up with the Ten Rings. Mm. Um, so will that ever get followed up on? Who Probably knows? Not. But... There's if anyone could take him that... on, it might be cool to see, like, uh, maybe Spider-Man somehow. Versus Mandarin? Yeah, you know. I mean, Tony started the whole versus Mandarin fight. Well, I mean... Well, better to end it. My only thing would be is if they go, <laughs> like, Wakanda. F- if they go full-on Mandarin, and they actually bring in Thing Fang Foom. Or even Stephen Strange. That would be dope. My thing is, because there's two Thing Fang Fooms. You can do Mecha Thing Fang Foom, or you can do real Thing Fang Foom. See, I'd rather have a real... Mecha Thing Fang Foom, There was a Mecha Thing Fang Foom at one point. Uh, yeah, remember like, remember when the first Avengers trailer came out and you see the big Chitauri Leviathan and someone was like, it's Fing Fang Foom. It kind of looks like that. It's not like... Because you've seen like regular comic Fing Fang Foom, right? Yeah. He's like that big like 60s He's looking a giant... dragon with like, the whiskers. Yeah, like, yeah. The, uh, with, like the Fu Manchu type thing. And yeah. He looks like Godzilla crossed over with a stereotype. <laughs> the other one is like the full-on like long Chinese dragon that's yeah. Mecha... And he shoots, like, lasers and shit from everywhere. Mm. He's like a helicarrier turned into a Zoid. That's pretty dope. It is. But uh, that, that's phase two. That is yep. phase two. Phase three is probably going to be much shorter. It will be. It'll, it'll, it'll have to be. We'll have to try. <clears throat> um, All right. Uh, do you want to just keep talking about phase three, and you can cut it in half and split it into two videos? Yeah, that works. All right. So All right. So <sighs> that's that on this one. That is that on this one. So thank you guys for listening. Uh, please make sure to check us out at our Instagram, uh, which is... Twitter. Oh, I didn't even get through the I handle. I made the same handle. You should have made them the same handle. I couldn't make them that the same handle. That would save time for it. That would save the time, but I still can't remember the handle for our fucking Twitter, uh, Instagram to begin with. And then it's what's Twitter Instagram. B it's and comics. C. Yeah, yes. B and C. Underscore B and C. And Underscore. our Twitter is, just so I can get it real quick, I'm actually logged into it. Uh, comics underscore brew underscore and underscore true underscore <laughs> podcast. But you can just look us up at, at brew comics because we got the dopest fucking handle on Twitter. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have currently six followers following 87 people. <laughs> I have tweeted twice. Come on, guys. <laughs> All right. Thanks, everybody. For, uh, thanks for listening. Stick around for part three, Which, and then our endgame reaction hopefully very soon after.